Hello, welcome to Come Learn with Paula. I'm so glad you'll be joining me today. We are in Revelation chapter 10, so go ahead and grab your Bibles, open them up. Uh, of course, the last book in the Bible, chapter 10. And if you don't want to start with this video and you want to see some of the previous ones, then just go to my channel and look at the playlist under Revelation and find the one you're on. Okay, great. And also, this is kind of a short passage, uh, but it's a really good passage. And I and let's see who we think that the angel is in in the book of um, chapter ten, Revelation. Okay, so if you don't have a Bible, click the more button down below, and there's the passage, and you can follow along. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So Revelation chapter ten, verse one, it says, "Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head." His face was like the sun and his legs were like fiery pillars. He was holding a little scroll which lay open in his hand and he planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. Okay, let's talk about this mighty angel. So first of all, it's a mighty angel. The angel was large enough that his one foot was on the sea and his one foot was on the land. And I just think that's interesting because I used to think his, his one foot was in the sea you know, so he'd be kind of lopsided, right? But um, it doesn't say that. It says he was on the water, and we know that Jesus walks on water, right? And he is Lord over the sea, and he's Lord over the land. And so I think this is a, a, very realistically a picture of Jesus coming. But there are some interesting things it says about him. So let's look at it. It says, first of all, he was a mighty angel. And we know an angel is a messenger. So God sends messengers to us. Uh, in different forms, and so it very in, in the Old Testament, uh, the angel of the Lord oftentimes came, um, the pre-incarnate Jesus. So it says a mighty angel coming down from heaven. So we know it's a from um, I, I believe it's a good angel, and then it says he's robed in a cloud. So I think he's kind of incognito. This is not for everybody to see. This is not the time when everybody looks and says, "Oh, there he is." This is uh, he's a little bit clo cloaked. And then it says, but these are all the things that make me think it's Jesus. It says, with a rainbow above his head. And, you know, we see Jesus pictured with a rainbow. And then also his face was like the sun and his legs were like fiery pillars. You know, in um, just in Revelation chapter 1, we saw um, that's how Jesus was described. He had, um, his hair was white like wool, which would be kind of like a cloud. His eyes were like blazing fire. Verse 15, his feet were like bronze glowing in the furnace. And his voice was out the sound of rushing waters. Okay, so I just kind of think this is a, a really special time when Jesus is coming down to the earth um, in the midst of the tribulation. Okay, so I'm going to, let's ask a question. I said, Jesus comes to... Uh, land and sea robed in a cloud and he holds an open scroll so imagine the view of Jesus coming in a cloud um, this would be a an awesome view right and I just put here what stands out to you most like if you saw him coming in a cloud and you saw the rainbow I think the rainbow would catch my attention first I love rainbows they're so beautiful and um, then it would be bright behind the clouds like because his eyes were like the sun and then these pillars that would be on the earth and the land. I think it would be a little bit in, uh, intimidating, <laughs> maybe a lot intimidating, be kind of scared. But at the same time, it would be beautiful, a beautiful sight. Um, and it would definitely get your attention, wouldn't it? So if you want to comment, just put a comment down below. Okay, um, so let's continue on in verse 2. He's holding a little scroll which lay open in his hands. And now we don't know... Um, you know what this scroll could be. This could be the gospel, uh, the good news of Jesus, because later on he asked John to eat it and he has to share. Um, so it could be the words of Christ, you know, that he wants to share to the people. Um, it, it could be um, a book of life. Um, I, I don't know. It could be, it could be so many things, right? We don't know, but it's probably not the scroll that was just opened in heaven with the different seals. Um, but it could be. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Put it down below. Okay. Anyway, he's opening, he's holding a scroll. And so, and 
He gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. Okay, so let's talk about this. You know, you know, Jesus is uh, the lion of Ju Judah, right? And so um, something interesting about lions, they, they don't roar until they have their prey because obviously they're hunters and they're not going to scare off their prey um, before they catch it, right? But once they've caught their prey, then they roar, you know, like, look at me, I got it. And so uh, it's a mighty roar. So it's a mighty sound. And when the we, we know that Jesus's voice is like rushing waters, right? But when he roars, you know, when he's got his prey, when whatever he came for, he's got, he's got whatever he came for. And then when he has it, he roars. And when he roars, then seven thunders spoke. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from heaven say, seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write them down. Okay, so I just think this is interesting because when when it th when you hear thunder speaking, I think of God. You know, remember when Jesus was uh, praying in John chapter twelve. Uh, let's read twenty seven through thirty. It says, "Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. You know, Jesus always had the submissive heart. Uh, glorify your name, Father." Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said that it had thundered and others said an angel had spoken to him. Verse 30. Jesus said this voice was not for was this voice was for your benefit not mine. Now is the time for judgment on the world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out, but I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. And he said this to show what kind of death he was going to die. So isn't this interesting? He knew that he would die. Um, he knew that God would be glorified through it, that we would be saved through it. Um, but God spoke at that time with a thundering, a thundering. So I think... This is the voice of God, um, the, th the seven thunders. I, I don't know what they're saying, but um, it is the voice of God. And the voice of God, it, it's many times in the Bible is referred to as thunder. They thought it thundered. Uh, the people that didn't understand. Remember Paul when he was on the road to Damascus, you know, um, he, he heard um, the voice of God. Actually, that was Jesus, wasn't it? He heard the voice of Jesus. Okay. Anyway, God does speak to us. I guess when Jesus was baptized um, and the dove came down, then the voice, this is my son whom I uh, am well pleased with. So, okay. Well, the seven thunders spoke and he was about to write it down and he said, nope, seal it up and don't write it down. <laughs> so it's kind of frustrating. There's more to the story. We don't know. There's a lot of things we don't know. Um, if he wanted us to know, he would let us know. But in this situation, um, you know, we have to walk by faith. And sometimes if it were revealed, maybe people would not stay faithful or they would uh, read too much into it. I don't know. But it was not for us to know at that time. So we should ask the Holy Spirit, please reveal to us what this is now, if it's for us now, because it very well could be for this day and time. Okay. Let's talk about this. Jesus roared like a victorious lion and the seven thunders spoke. A lion roars as uh, he has succeeded in his hunt. What do you think Jesus was hunting for? Okay, let's think about that. And I think we're going to talk about it in the next section. But what could it be? Okay, uh, verse number five. Then the angel I had seen standing on the sea and the land raised his right hand to heaven and he swore by him who lives forever and ever who created the heavens and all that is in them and the earth and all that is in it and the sea and all that is in it and he said there will be no more delay but in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet the mystery of God will be accomplished just as he announced to his servant the prophets okay so uh, here, the man that is on the land and the sea, he raises his right hand. He's swearing 
Um, and he swears by him who lives forever and ever. So God, that's God, who lives forever and ever. And then he says, God created the heavens and all that is in them and the earth and all that is in them and the sea and all that is in them. So he is the creator of all things, the, the heavens and the earth and the sea. And he says there will be no more delay, like it's time. Now is the time. Now is the time for the mystery to be revealed. And so the question is, just like the seven thunders, what, what do they say? Well, the mystery, what is the mystery of God, right? Um, but in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished just like it was announced to his servants, the prophets. So it's been announced, the mystery's been announced, and it's going to be accomplished about the time of the seventh trumpet. So we've already seen six trumpets, right? So this is the time for the seventh trumpet. And so I'm just thinking of a verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And, you know, we have to let Scripture interpret Scripture. Um, you know, there is a mystery of God where the Gentiles can be saved, where people can be saved through Jesus Christ. That is a mystery that was kept hidden, right? If the, if the uh, demons had known it, they would not have crucified Jesus because it allowed us to come to salvation in God. Okay, but there's another mystery here. And so I want to read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and let's start at chapter, verse 50. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit imperishable. So you, you, ha you can't come in as a fleshly body, and, you, and a perishable fleshly body cannot come into heaven. Verse 51, listen, I tell you a mystery. So here's a mystery. This is a mystery. It could be the mystery. Let's see. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. That means not everybody's going to die, but everybody is going to change from a, a earthly body. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. It's kind of interesting. It says here at the last trump because this mystery that the angel's talking about, it says, but this is verse 7 of chapter of chapter 10 but in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet the mystery of god will be accomplished okay so let's go back and read verse 52 in of uh, first corinthians 15 52 in a flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump so i think we're talking about the same thing here for the trumpet will sound the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed for the perishable must close it, itself with imperishable and the mortal with immortality when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality then the saying that is written will come true death has been swallowed up in victory where O oh, death is your victory where O oh, death is your sting the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so this right here could very well be the raising of the dead and the gathering of the saved right here. Because this is a, Jesus is um, going to gather us. But then Jesus is, always, is also going to come back as the second coming of Christ after the rule of the beast. But I think right here, we're being the mystery, it's the time, no more delay, the mystery will be revealed. We will put on our incorruptible bodies. This is a time right here, I think, I think he roars because he comes to get us. And once he has us, he roars and the seven thunders uh, exclaim, and then we're caught up with him. I, I mean, it may not be, but it, it looks like it. It looks like it could be. You know, it's all a little bit of a puzzle, and we have to ask the Holy Spirit to give us information. But regardless, um, we're with him. So this is all when the seventh trumpet is about to sound, the mystery of God will be accomplished, just as he announced to his servants the prophets. So it's kind of exciting, something fun to think about. Um, and I put here, I said, uh, Jesus proclaims no more delay and the mystery of God will be accomplished. 
what do you believe the mystery of God is? So we talked about that, you know, if you want to put down below what you think, I would love to see it. And why would it have been delayed? Well, why would it have been delayed? I, you know, I'm thinking it's because he wants everyone to be saved, doesn't want anyone to be lost. And so he's waiting for those people to come to him, right? He loves us all. And someday there will be an end date, you know, and um, we just want to uh, make sure we're on this side of it, right? We want to accept Jesus Christ now while we still can because it's a beautiful life. Okay, let's go on to verse number eight. Then the voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me once more. Go and take the scroll. Okay, so this is um, John. John is listening and there's a voice from heaven saying, Go, take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and asked him to give me the little scroll. He said to me, Take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey. Okay, let's pause there for a second. Um, so he says, go, go out, go take the scroll. And I think it's sweet. He goes and instead of just taking it, he asks for it. So, um, he said, so I went to the angel and asked him to give me the little scroll. Like, you know, I, I think we have not because we asked not, right? I think that, um, just going and expecting God to do his part. I think God wants a, a little bit from us too, right? So he went and did what he was told and he, he actually asked for it and then he gave it to him and he said to eat it. And it, and so, you know, the kind of the question is, what do you think the scroll is? And then it, it, it tasted good in his mouth, but it made his, it was as sweet as honey. But um, when he ate it, it, it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when he had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. So it's like, um, it's almost like it's... Um, sweet. It's something good. It's something wonderful. But when it plays out, you know, the way that it plays out, it's, um, it's, it's upsetting, you know, it's upsetting because, you know, perhaps this is the, the, the good news of Jesus Christ. He's going to go and prophesy to the people perhaps. And if that's the case, well, it's good news. You know, it's sweet as honey. It's a, a, a beautiful gift to receive salvation. But There'll be so many people that reject it. So many people that say no and, and, you know, it breaks your heart. And so it doesn't settle well in your stomach when you see that people um, refuse it and, and don't take it. So uh, isn't that interesting? It can be something really good, but if we don't receive it, then it doesn't help us in any way. So it makes his stomach sour. And he says, you must prophesy again to many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. And, you know, we've already seen many people's nations, languages, and kings around the throne room of God coming out of the great tribulation. I think that was chapter five. So um, this is a very exciting passage here. I think we look over this chapter a lot, but um, wow, this could actually be our catching away that people are wanting to. He comes, he's cloaked. Uh, it's, it's not a, it's not really for everyone to see. I think there are really different times when we're caught up. We're going to see pretty soon the 144,000 are going to be caught up. You know, so um, I, we just have to read it for what it says and then take it as he gives it to us. If it were clear, there would be no dissension, right? Everybody has their own opinion on how it works. Um, so we just have to understand, you know, Holy Spirit, teach us, show us what you're trying to say. But I think it's exciting. This very well could be Jesus uh, coming to gather his own. Okay, so in this last section, I said the scroll was given to John to proclaim, uh, to proclaim, and it was as sweet as he ate it, but it turned his stomach, his stomach sour. Okay, the words of God are sweet in our souls, but how can they turn your stomach sour? So just think about it, if there's ever been a time, you know, when you're excited about the Word of God, but then someone will just shut you down really quickly if you start talking about God. Um, you know, it's it's okay. It's okay. We just have to do our part. We're not responsible for how they receive it or if they do or don't receive the Word of God, right? Okay, uh, so in this section, we learned that we are to embrace the work of, that God gives us to do until He comes roaring and accomplishing the mystery of God. So, um, we need to be faithful. We need to share the gospel. We need to do our part, whatever it is your part to do. Don't um, 
grow weary and well-doing, press on, finish your job, finish the race, run hard, do it with excellence and perseverance. Ask the Lord to help you do everything through Christ. Don't do it on your own, um, but do it through Christ. And, uh, you know, at some point, he will come. At some point, there will be no more delay, and he will come, and he will take his home, take his own home. Okay, well, uh, it's been nice chatting with you today. That's chapter 10. We'll go to chapter 11 next time. And until then, I hope you have a great day. Bye.